Hey guys, so today is another video where I go over my end of the year books. I have a playlist that I have going. I've done my top 10 fantasy and my top 10 science fiction. And today I just kind of want to discuss and rank the short story collections I've read this year because that is a new thing for me. I think before this year I had read a few short stories, but by meeting the Codex Cantina, so Crypto and Una and my friend Dini, they started doing a lot of short stories and then I remembered I really like short stories like Edgar Allan Poe was like a big deal for me growing up. I loved reading all of his stories, which I should reread them eventually, but that led to this exploration of short story collections. So today I'm going to rank them. I think it's going to be nine to one. I didn't quite read 10 short story collections, but I'm really happy with what I read. I really liked all of these for very different reasons. So hopefully if you've been looking for short story collections, I can help you figure out which of these might be worth picking up for you. Obviously all of these are tailored by my enjoyment and I do have reviews for some of these so I will point to those as I can. And like in all the videos I will have a link in the description to my bookshop.org shop so if you want to find a place to buy them and support local bookstores you can do that there and if you use those links I will receive a small commission. But that's not important. Let's get into these books. At number nine, I have Sunspot Jungle Volume 1. This is a huge short story anthology. I think it was almost 500 pages, if not 500 pages. It had so many authors that I got to discover in this collection. Also, look at this art. <laughs> it is stunning. And some of them were more hits than misses. I mean, that's what happens when you have 500 pages of short stories by all different authors. It was also going from like horror, speculative fiction, fantasy, and sci-fi. What I really liked was how international it felt. There were definitely stories that were basically inspired and written by people from different countries. So for me, having that influence in these stories was really great. What I would recommend if you ended up picking up this short story collection is to give yourself a month or two to read it. Um, I think for me, a small bit of my burnt outness and why it's at the bottom of the list is I tried to read it all in two to three weeks. And that was just too much. All of these stories are so unique and that is a positive, but it's also jarring to, you know, try to read two or three very different stories every day, but I really liked it. I still need to read the second volume, which I just need to go get myself a copy, but this was a really great taste of so many different authors that I now have on my radar to pick up their next works. Number eight is Shades in Shadow by N.K. Jemisin, and this is a short story collection of I think three stories that you cannot read unless you've read the Inheritance Trilogy. But if you have read and loved the Inheritance Trilogy, these are stories that kind of bridge the time gaps between each one and kind of we get to visit characters that maybe were more central in one story but took more of a side role in the next. I really liked it. I, I binged it in like a day. Obviously they're very short. They're about characters I was invested in in the world I love. But obviously this is a very niche recommendation. You should not read this unless you've read the Inheritance Trilogy, which you should read, but it's also like the hardest trilogy in the world for me to describe. I'm going to reread it and then I'm going to give it a better review than what I first did at the baby days of my channel, but it's it's just N.K. Jemisin's writing, which I, I love. <laughs> Number seven is Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chang. This is my copy that I really like the art of. It's inspired by the story for Arrival. The story for Arrival, the movie, is in this collection. So if you want to know that story, you should pick up this collection. This collection is of his short stories from about as old as maybe 20 or 25 years ago. And they explore a lot of different themes. The ones that worked best for me were definitely the one like Arrival. What were some of the other ones? I know for me, I really liked Division by Zero because it plays off the whole trope of math proofs in terms of its story st um, telling structure. Um, oh, the one we really liked was Liking What You See, a documentary. So I talked about this a bunch with some of my friends. I really liked a lot of these stories. What Ted Chang also tends to do is look at religion and science fiction. And I think he does this in a very nuanced way and he does it pretty well, especially you wouldn't probably notice this as much while reading it. He is, I think, agnostic to atheist, but he does treat religion with a lot of respect. And I think 
we don't get enough of that nuanced approach to religion in sci-fi stories. But as I always say about Ted Chiang, he does this great thing where he takes these philosophical ideas, adds in characters I love. So I really do like this collection. Um, <laughs> there's a physics portion to the Arrival story that I didn't know was there because I watched the movie first. And it's so cool. If you, like me, have a physics background, you're just like, I didn't. That's so subtle. That's so beautiful because the joy of physics is its simplicity and, and it's just highlighted here because I think a lot of times physics is thought of as like that really hard science and yes it's challenging to master but the way he was able to portray a physics idea so simply and with the beauty that we in the field all love was just like great. <laughs> Number six is The Assimilated Cuban's Guide to Quantum Santeria by Carlos Hernandez. I picked this up because everyone's been talking about Sal and Gabby Breaks the Universe, which is his middle grade duology. And I'm still dipping my toes into middle grade. It's definitely not the age group I reach for, but I wanted to read his work. And I saw because of Jocelyn from Yogi with a Book that he has a short story collection. And I picked it up and it was really fun. They are really fun sci-fi stories written with just like a Cuban or Latinx lens attached to it. Um, there was one story in particular that I feel like I am very biased to liking. It's um, it's called Fantasy Impromptu with all the rest of the letters. If you've ever played classical music, you'll know like the names of a lot of them are very... Um, they're just, it's, the nomenclature is strict. <laughs> but I, I saw that name and I'm like, that can't be the song I learned how to play in third grade because I have played this song my whole life. I can't play it well now, but I could play it. And it was, it was about that song and this piano player and the way he wrote about that song that I've played my whole life was stunning. And there were just so many stories that I just really loved. And I just remembered sitting outside, reading these stories and just enjoying them. Most of the time I cannot read short stories back to back. I normally have to read a short story, then do something else. I need to refresh my brain. I didn't have to do that with his stories. I was just really loving each one and each one wrapped up so well. And he did have like a mini Easter egg reoccurring character throughout the stories, so I, I did like that as well. It was a great short story collection. I highly recommend it and I want him to write more things because I really liked his writing style. I really liked the ideas he had and it was really fun. Number five is Sword of Destiny. This is the second book in the Witcher series or the second short story collection. And I like this one. I don't like it as much as The Last Wish, but The Last Wish couldn't be on this list because I did not read it in the time frame I've allotted for these videos. But you do get a lot more of Geralt's feelings in these books, and I do think that's really important. And some of my favorite stories are in it. I just like Last Wish overall. Obviously, if you are into the Witcher series or the TV show and want to know the source material, you should read The Last Wish and... Um, this book, Sword of Destiny, before you watch the show, if you want the source material background. There's definitely, like in the show, this very heavy emphasis on destiny and can you escape destiny. It's a little heavy-handed. I feel like it's done that way both in the stories and in the show, but I really do like the character work that's brought here. I did feel like there was a lack of monster hunting <laughs> in this short story collection compared to The Last Wish, but I did enjoy getting to know Geralt better and it got me very excited for the TV show. Number four is Her Body and Other Parties. This is... Whew, I have a review for this short story collection. No one ever watches it because no one really knows about this book, but boy do I like this short story collection. It is creepy and thought-provoking and so the way she plays with narrative structure keeps me very engaged. I don't think every story was perfect. I definitely think there was one story that was way too long, but I also want to reread it because it was this, it was basically a short story that was the title and couple line description of each episode of like a Law and Order SVU show. And you had to like pick out from like these seasons of episodes what was happening and it was weird. It was kind of like watching the Too Many Cooks video with like all the sitcom songs that go too long. That's how I felt reading that story. And so, I don't know, just like the combination of the themes, and the themes really are about someone who identifies as female existing in the world. Like, what is the relationship between her body and other people and herself and other things? 
it was done in sometimes a sci-fi way, sometimes a horror way. Uh, I really liked it. You guys should check it out if you really want some really interesting speculative fiction. I just, I still think about it. I still want to copy because I, I want to reread them. There were some that you just cannot take everything in on the first read. The um, first story, Husband Stitch, is just phenomenal. I love that one a lot. And then you learn what a husband stitch is and you're just like, ugh. But that's why it is so high up on this list. Number three, I also have a review for, and that is The Thing Around Your Neck by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Oh, this is out of my wheelhouse. This, these are not fantasy. These are not sci-fi. These are stories about Nigerian people. They could be Nigerian Americans or Nigerians in Nigeria, and they are discussing situations, I think, primarily in which they are trapped, and the story tends to end when a change has occurred. Not necessarily that they're leaving that trapped state, but where a catalyst has entered play and now the scene will change. And I loved all 12 of these stories. I even remember there are 12 stories. I discussed this with Rachel from Let Me in the Library. I invited her to my local book club where we discussed it there. And normally short story collections are really, really difficult to discuss at book clubs. This one went so well because her theming is so connective between each story. You can talk about one story and be like, oh yeah, and I really like how she did it in this story. It worked so well and her writing is gorgeous and as someone who doesn't read as much contemporary or historical fiction I still was very invested in all of these characters. I will read some of her novels one day I'm very interested in what else she has to say but like this was such a good entry point for me and it worked so well for discussion and just also my own personal enjoyment. I really liked thinking about these stories. So if you know, you want to hear more, there is a longer review, but I highly, highly recommend it. Number two is completely out of my wheelhouse. This is Once Upon an Eid, a short story anthology of middle grade short stories talking about the holiday Eid, which is the day after Ramadan is over. There's this big celebration in the Islamic community and I loved this collection so much. It brought me so much joy and catharsis. It's, it's about holidays. It's about traditions through the eyes of children. And we've all been kids. We've all had to handle holiday situations that were not normal, that weren't perfect. Or when we are just, you know, changing and figuring out our lives and where we fit into it. And it was, it was great. Honestly, for me, perfect for 2020 because this holiday season is not normal. I mean, we're all doing our best to make sure we have holiday seasons that are safe and it's just, it's a lot. So to have that resilience of children, it was great. And there were some stories that like, they almost made me cry and I don't cry a lot when I read. I was just like, yeah, I can relate to that story. That story, it hit. <laughs> so I, I just love this collection. I wasn't expecting it to hit me so much and that's why it, it had to be number two. And then number one, if you watched my video from Monday, which was my sci-fis, you shouldn't be surprised. But I guess if you know you don't want me to spoil that video, I'll let you go go watch that and come back. But number one is Exhalation by Ted Chiang. I love this. I love this short story collection. I will keep talking about this short story collection until you all have read it. I have a review. Most people who like science fiction short stories love this collection. I, I say most. You can't generalize everything. There are definitely science fiction people who probably read this and don't love it. I love it because this one, unlike Stories of Your Life and Others, focuses more on his sci-fi musings, like the, the more science-y questions. There are one to two actually more than just one that incorporates religious thought. These ones, like I said, they're more about fatalism, they're more about destiny. It, it's so good. There's a story in here about basically that Black Mirror episode where like, what if you could recall your memories perfectly? What would that do to you? And paralleling it with when indigenous people were introduced to writing and how that would affect their culture and relationship with memory because oral memory and like oral telling of things it's different than having it written down so that messes with memory same as if you had perfect recall versus our own memory and I'm gonna probably do a video on memory one day for the channel for my science behind the magic because memory is not as infallible as we all think 
And so I loved that story. There's a story about Digians, which are basically Neopets, <laughs> throwback to that. And they live in this world and it's about how everything evolves there. How do you treat these Digians, you know, as they grow up? Uh, th there are so many stories in here that I love. And I love them so much. He, he is, Ted Chang is the best short story author I've ever read. He is so good at his craft. I, I'm, I'm, I'm mesmerized by it. So I definitely think that if you want to pick up any author on this list specifically, he is really good at giving you a concise story. I don't think I've liked short stories by an author this much since I read Edgar Allan Poe as a kid. But that's this video. If you've read a short story collection that you think based on what I've said here, I would really like please let me know. I'm still searching and finding short story collections to explore. I really like doing that now. Right now I'm reading How Long Till Black Future Month, so I do know that one exists. I just, I'm not done with it yet. <laughs> and other than that, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!